Our, our next speaker is Martijn van Groningen. Um, his expertise is in document relations, which is what he's going to be talking about. He's been doing open source since around 2008 in a variety of places, uh, working on Lucene originally, now Elasticsearch. And uh, Martijn, you're going to be around for the whole day. Yeah. <clears throat> so make sure you, uh, if you don't get your questions in uh, immediately afterwards that you um, come up and ask him later. Thanks. Okay, let's get started. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about the relations um, um, and uh, there, are, there are several, in Elasticsearch there is support, several support for this. Um, uh, and yeah, we're, we're going to discuss it, what's the use. Uh, but my first question is, who many of you have actually you know, used Elasticsearch or played around with Elasticsearch in this? Uh, let's say around 30%. So at least like 60% hasn't. Um, so that I, it was quite for me to introduce some introduction slides about the list of So let's do that first, and then go back to the to the document relation part. Of this part. So a really fast introduction about the list of certs. Um, so what is a list of certs? A list of cert is a document-based uh, search engine. Uh, it's built on top of, of Apache Lucene, um, and it is uh, JSON-based. Uh, the major characteristics about it, uh, about Elasticsearch, is that um, it's dynamic. So this, the, 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 they're there. We usually say it's schema free, but there is a schema. So that's why I said the schema is dynamic. It grows with your data. Um, um, it is distributed and multi tenant, uh, easily scalable, uh, and everything is API centric as much as possible. So that's basically what it is. So what can you do with it? Um, it all the features in Elasticsearch, they, they are built around these key features, I guess. So um, free text search, obviously, is, is one of the major features that's in Elasticsearch. Um, um, so for example, um, uh, let's say your, your data set is, is emails. You index emails from a mailing list, um, um, then you could as a free text query, uh, Apache the senior release, and it will try to find any document, and then it will rank it according to the query uh, to the documents that it has matched with. It will give you a rank of um, But it can also do structured service. So find me any emails that is sent from a specific address. Uh, find me any emails that are sent uh, uh, between a certain period. Um, um, so this, this structured service is if you compare it to SQL, is anything that you would usually put in a warehouse, that's what you must have uh, structured search for. And then, on top of the, one of the major features is statistics in Elasticsearch. So, as part of, of the query you use in Elasticsearch, you can get that statistics about the, the, all the, the documents it has found. So not the top 10 documents or the top 20 documents that you usually display in a, in a user interface, but for the complete set of documents that is matched with certain queries, find out information about it. So, for example, which are the top senders based on the query you, you, have, set, you, you, you have sent as a service. All those key features can be combined. So we have a free text of query, structure search, and gather some statistics about the documents that have matched. And all the features work uh, in real time. Some of them work in real time, but most of them work in real time. Meaning, you do some changes, and at a certain point, it's being it, the, the the index in the search is updated. And usually, it's, the update process is like every second, but this obviously is configurable with the default to try to update the index every second. Um, so that's you know, the key features in a nutshell. So everything in the search is API based. So they are. Uh, uh, there are a bunch of API, a lot of APIs. There are uh, write related APIs, so an index API and a lead API, an update API. Uh, you know, for example, you know, you do something with your data, to lead it, uh, update a specific field, for example. There are APIs that allow you to bulk multiple operations in a single request, uh, bulk API. There's a delete query, those kind of APIs are there and usable. Read API is obviously a search API, there's a get API, 
there's a suggest API for suggestions or for a did you mean kind of functionality. Uh, uh, and there is like, there uh, is an, uh, a multi serve API, for example, allows you to bundle multiple search requests into a single request. Uh, um, the get API is something special, it's like effectively give me document with this ID, and it's not actually search, it's just retrieval on, on, based on, on an ID, uh, um, which that, that works in real time. Uh, the search features, they work in real time. And the multi gate API allows you to bundle those different questions. Um, the other part of the API is an admin related API, so there's a health API to check the health of the cluster. Obviously, this asserts usually doesn't run on one machine, it runs on several machines, hundreds of machines, depends on you know how much money you want to spread the hardware and how big your data set is. Uh, so you can check the health of the, of the cluster, you can, you can check the state of the cluster. Um, I mean, let's assert with mappings, mappings that you, you know, that that are created by, you know, automatically by default, but obviously you can influence those mappings. So uh, certain fields you might want to analyze differently, the text, right? So for specific fields, you may want to not use the default analyze, uh, different analyzer, but something else. For example, you want to have stemming, which is usually, which doesn't have by default, stemming also has them on, on, a, on a field. So it's something you can figure in the mapping, change it, and it's done. And there are a lot more of those. So this is smart. So to give a smart sample, um, this is the, the, an example of how to use the index API. I we usually show curl examples. Um, who, who is in here is familiar, familiar with curl? Or, few, okay. Curl is just an API. Like you should actually a command line utility that allows you to execute HTTP requests <coughs> to an endpoint. In this case, the endpoint. Here is one node in Elasticsearch, in an Elasticsearch cluster. Um, we use Squirrel because it's like la it's language agnostic. Uh, most most developers have, have used it and, and know how to use it uh, and know uh, you know the implications. Uh, but if obviously when you the code develop the API, um, you can use a, a client that fits best with your application. Um, so. Uh, um, if you're creating a Ruby application, there's a Ruby client, and um, if you're creating a Java application, using Java client. Um, this is just to be language. Is it here? We'll, we'll we put data into Elasticsearch, so uh, we put it in the emails index. Uh, it is a private email, and the ID was specified, um, and then we define as payload of the request, the body of the request, the actual document. Um, and then we, we use JSON uh, um, as one of the formats. Uh, JSON is a format that effectively describes itself. The, the structure of the data describes you know, how it looks. Um, in this case, we have a title field, a tool field, and a body field. I framed the fields a bit, otherwise it you know, you know, doesn't fit on the screen, but then a document can be pretty, pretty big. It can have hundreds, thousands of fields if you really need to. Um, um, and JSON allows you to define a structure. For example, the tool field in this case, it's not a string, but it's an array, and an array of two strings. So JSON allows you to effectively design your data as you want to do. So when you uh, index this uh, document, you get back a response, so whether it's successful, tells you one index, what types it belongs to, and the ID, and the version. Um, this, the first three may seem really verbose, um, uh, but IDs, for example, you can it can be auto-generated if you wish to. That's as it sort of supports that, and you can um, you can index in, into a what we call an alias, which effectively is a shortcut to another index. Um, if you index into an alias, uh, or then it, in here it tells you the concrete index it went into. Um, this is the data, and one thing I want to mention is the type. The type is effectively a label for the data. But on top of this, it also, each type in an index has a mapping. And a mapping is your schema, <coughs> is how your data should be treated. Right now, it's, it's generated automatically based on the, on, on, on the data you put in. Uh, so we have, in this case, two, two string fields, and it will effectively configure two the three uh, string fields. So it's, it's in here. Um, so when you've got data, you can, you can search it. So there's a specific uh, uh, API uh, called the underscore search endpoint effectively that allows you to search 
So in this case, find me any document uh, that contains what she used to release, and we'll find it. Um, so you see that the query is part of the body request, that uh, and that's in this case the, the query DSL. It allows you to define queries. This is the most simple query you can send. One field, and this, 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 this. Uh, terms need to be in, that, in that, those documents. Take a better response. This response is changed, otherwise it doesn't fit on the screen. But here, this, this is the core response. The total amount of documents that match, the highest score, and then the hit. And in this case, we're one hit, but uh, usually you have 10 hits, 20 hits, depending. And obviously, you can paginate those hits by the search API. There are options for the options. Um, but the key thing is here that, uh, that the query is really sophisticated. So you can write really cool. Uh, this is a more, an example for a more, comp uh, uh, more complex query. So you have a top-level Boolean query, and where you, in this case, have two must classes. And the first class is the um, must class is the same query we have used in the previous example, finding anything with what you've released. And then we have a, a effectively a structured restriction. Give me anything that was sent, uh, was sent uh, on April from April first. So the GTA stands for greater than. Or greater than equal or, or equal. Um, so it will turn anything from this time frame. So here we have combined free text search with the structured search. And it will, you get back the similar response if there are any matches, of course, uh, as the response you've seen. So this is my really short introduction um, about the search. Uh, I hope it gives a better context for what I'm going to tell next. So in the search, you have a um, And make sure it's a document based, you find anything in JSON, um, um, but the JSON documents is translated into a scene document. So we have, we have built on top of all that Apache was seen, and we translate the JSON into a scene document. That's what we need to keep in mind. The nested and parent child support and the search today are just tools for document design. So it allow you to, to create the, the best document design for your specific application. So let's take a look at an, an example document for designing a, a book. So in this case, um, we have uh, we designed a book with title, summary, publish year, field, author, and cutters field. What you can see here is that the publish year and the number pages field, they are integers, and they also be, if you are having to find a, a mapping for those fields, it will be treated as an integer in Elasticsearch. That's, that's the default. So we have a book. Uh, no, the book is fine. Uh, but let's... Um, But let's add, if, if you want to add data that um, is related to this book, for example, chapter data is related to the book data. So how are you going to how are you going to design that? So one way to do it is to effectively index each chapter as separate documents, but associate the document the, the book data with each chapter document. That's one way of doing it. Nothing wrong with it. Um, another example of how you could do it is uh, have one document where the chapter data and the book data is here, so to effectively normalize in one document. And, and you can see here, JSON allows us to have a nested structure. So the chapter data is part of the book data, and the chapter data is like a, a lower level in the book data. Here. Another way of doing it is index each entity effectively as a separate document. So we have a book document and two uh, chapter documents, and we index them, and, and by some magic query time joins, we'll join them on. That's uh, also, way to go in Elasticsearch, that's you can do this by the parent-child uh, feature. Um, document can let, um, whatever solution you're going to choose, uh, each has a different granularity, a different document granularity, and it's the unit of your data. You really need to think up front, usually, of what level of granularity you're going to choose, because that's the will be the general granularity that users will see your data, like each hit will be the, will be equal to the, your chosen granularity. And it's up to you how, what, what you design. Like a lower level granularity, like on the chapter level, or a more higher level, just one book, for example, as a single hit. <coughs> and how does this, I mean, whatever you're going to choose, it also has an effect on the scalability of the data. So let's talk uh, about how to do it. So this, this, this slide, it represents a data set and, and how it relates to it. So you have this data set, it's kind of relations, and it's fine. So, and you can do this data. Um, if, if it fits on one node, you're, it's, 
effectively really interesting. You know, you, with all the data on the machine, you can do some drawing and you get the results back. Um, so that, that's fine, there's no problem with that. Uh, but what if your data doesn't fit on a single machine, so you need to scale out? So the question is how are you going to define the data? And, 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 and uh, how are you going to define it also has an impact on the queryability of your data. So one way of doing this is really cutting to one half on one machine and one half the other machine. Um, but a downside of the approach, you query, and you will see that between the nodes, you have a lot of search requests in order to look up the right data, etc. cetera. Um, and this can be very expensive you know, on, on your infrastructure. This is two nodes, they get 100 nodes, and each of them do some search sort of query, and that's, I, it will can kill your cost. Uh, can, can choke it. So in another approach is you do normalize data. Like the, the data and all the data is effectively indexed as one document. I'm trying to put it with a line. So uh, each line is effectively a document. So you do a query, uh, one extra subquery to another node to get the data you need. You merge the data together and send it back. That's, an, that's a valid approach to do it. And it's, in search engine, it's the de facto way of dealing with relations. Denormalize. But normalizing also has its, its uh, downside. So, and that comes with effectively at the right time, not at search time. So let's say you want to update one field, or you, you want to add something to a document. Effectively means that you need to index the whole document. So um, that's, that's, that's the major downside. So let's kind of take a look, another look at our data set. If we take another look, and you might see a pattern, like data that belongs together, and some data that doesn't belong together. So you can get sections in your data. Each in this side is sections. Uh, it belongs together, and that, that piece of data you want to, to join up. And the other data, you don't need to join up because it's, it has no relation with it. If you know this, you can uh, effectively define the sections, not the data, just, just cut it in half, but just define the sections more or less evenly. And then you can do, with one extra sub request to, to any node in your system, you can get the data you need and start to send it over. So it's important that those sections, they get partitioned to the right machines and, and in order for, to know that the, to find out which, uh, for a single document, if it has other documents that it needs to take into account, it just needs to do a, effectively a local lookup, a local join. And this works out very well. And effectively, this is how, how the parent-child uh, works. So to finish this up, uh, yeah, I deal with, uh, uh, you deal with relations at query time or at, uh, or at index time. And there are things you need to, uh, it, it, it's, up, it's up to your use case. Where do you want to pay the price? And what is also, in your case, where you can, where you can afford to pay the price. One note, many to many relations is, is not, uh, so, um, it's really hard to support in any distributed system. That's why it is assured that that's not, uh, if you do have this kind of relations, the only way to go is to normal. So let's take a look at the parent child. So as a search, you, you have a document, and you can say this is a parent document, this is a child document. You can index it separately into, this, uh, uh, into the same index, but with a different type. In the child type, you don't need to configure uh, 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 to what parent type it comes to. Um, so that, that's practically, practically uh, In Elasticsearch, the, the parent and the child documents, they all arrive into the, into the same shard, and the shard sits, sits on, on a node. Um, and, and we use the, the, the ID of the parent, effectively, is the, the value we use for, for guiding those documents to the right position of the page. Um, on top of this, there's also an, an ID cache on each shard that effectively allow, allows an efficient in-memory join, so there's no need to go to this. Uh, and there are ways in Elasticsearch to we build this ID cache. Uh, uh, I think more uh, Usually, they, those those caches are built on demand, but usually, you want them to be there for the first search request. So, how does it uh, work? We index. Uh, uh, well, in the first case, we define a mapping. So, in this case, the first API is to create an index. We create a products index, and we define a, a mapping for the uh, an, uh, and we say we have an over mapping, and it's over mapping. It points to uh, type products. So in this case, we're indexing price data and query data, which is usually where you want to use parent-child. 
price data changes often, while the product data rarely changes or not that, <coughs> not that frequent. So you want to deal, be able to deal with frequent updates on updates in the price. Price can be removed, added, updated, and so on. Um, so that's why that's this use case to experiment with child. So when you configure this, then you can effectively index uh, 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 the offer data to the price data. And the only thing you need to, need to do is to take, you need to tell us a church to what parent did it want to do. The parent doesn't need to be there at, uh, at the time of index. <coughs> it can, it, it, it's, it's okay if you add the parent later on. When you are index data, you're um, you can query it, so uh, there are several queries for it. One, uh, one query is the child query. So you define a query that you want to execute on the offer data. And uh, what you get back as a result is the products that have, match, that have matches on their related offer documents. So this query returns offers, uh, returns product matches based on the hits you have on the offers. Because multiple uh, offers can match for a single parent, uh, and that single parent is, this is a single hit. You need to define how you want to accumulate the scores on the child level to the parent level. You don't have to specify it, you can ignore it obviously, but you, 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 you can specify it. So should it be just like sum up the score, should it be an average, should it take the lowest, the, the highest score, the lowest score. Um, so that's, that, that's something you need to define. The other query you can use is has parent query. So it has parent query, it returns child documents only, while the other one just returns parent documents. But it just does the reverse of what the uh, has child has child is. So you index those stuff, the report now that you index those this, this data separately. Um, uh, uh, you're really flexible with this. That's the you know. But there is some overhead involved. You know, that at query time we do extra work, we uh, we use extra memory uh, and we do some in-memory joining. And that, that that's 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 the announcement of it. But uh, it's really flexible on the right side. Okay, let's go to uh, nested uh, uh, objects. So the nested support as a search is there for smart normalization. Um, so in a lot of cases, you have a domain model where you know the, 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 the one part of the data, like chapter data and book data, they have the same life cycle. You know, and the likelihood, like the chapter data, is not going to change likely. Maybe a typo or something. Like you fix an error. But it's not that the chapter changes all the time, you know, with, uh, with, uh, comparing it to the book. And the same for our data types. In that case, it's maybe interesting to, to, to normalize it in a smart way. Um, and the normalizing is always faster at query time. So let's get back to, uh, uh, so we talked a bit about signed documents in the, in the, in the background. Uh, and this is a really smart way of, this, of, of uh, denormalizing your um, your data. So, uh, um, because the structure of, 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 the, of the JSON it gives you the feeling that you know you can index each chapter individually and you can back, can back the matches based on that. Um, um, and that's very nice, but there's one downside. And I remember I told you that every Elasticsearch document, which is JSON, gets translated into an OSIN document. And OSIN document is Kind of a different story. It doesn't know about nesting or whatever or inner objects. Um, just key value pairs. That's it. Uh, so what happens is that uh, this document gets translated in, into this you see uh, document, and you see you, you lose the, the connection between the chapters. So um, if I want to search in in, uh, in a in the introduction chapter, so let's say I want to I want only books that have an introduction chapter. Uh, where the number of pages is bigger than 30. In that case, this document will happily return. Although in your data you have to sign that it's a separate chapter, but it will the two the number of pages fields, 12 and 39, they will be in line, well, they will be put in the same Lucene document. So there's no way for Lucene or <coughs> any of its critical abilities to tell uh, that it's wrong. It's just it's it's there. So it will just return. So in order to not have this in order to, to normalize it with this, with this nested structure in mind, there is something you can configure in the mapping. It's called uh, nested mapping. You, you enable it on a field. So here we have a books index. We find a mapping for the type book, and we say the, the chapters field is type nested. And what then happens in the last 
in, in Los Angeles. So actually, you'll see, uh, we index it slightly different. What happens is that that document, it gets indexed into several Lucene documents. Um, so we index those inner objects as separate documents first, and right after the document, we have the main document or the root document. By doing this, we keep, uh, uh, we keep the, the relations that you have on the chapter layer. So uh, the introduction page is on, doesn't have more than three pages in this case. It has 12 pages. So the query I mentioned won't result into a hit. So, so if you want to generalize and have inner objects, you really need to use uh, a nested. And actually, it's an implementation of plastic search. And uh, any, any other solution that uses the scene and wants to translate higher level data into a single document, uh, you need to do something with it, like have several documents with a single document or a single document. So on the lesson search level, it's not really joint <coughs> in a single document, but on the scene level, it is joint. It's like joint in these different documents. The documents, they are indexed into the same block, and they always remain next to each other. That's why it's, it's, it's uh, uh, on the scene level, a really fast joint, and you will not even notice it. So if you have this configured, um, there is something that you can use. It's called a nested query, where you basically, OK, you want to uh, get a query on the, on the chapter level, uh, in this case, uh, indexing data, and you want to, uh, uh, you define a query and you, you, you tell it how those matches should be pushed to the, to the document, to the main document. Same with, with parent child, the <coughs> score mode that you, that you can configure, and uh, you know, it, will, it will yield in, in the <coughs> matches you expect. But something to keep in mind, and people, and to overlook it, you the, the complete root, the complete document is returned. So you don't get back in the inner nested hits or something like that. It's a, the complete document is returned, but the, the, the queries they run as expected. Um, so so why is it really fast in the nested uh, the nested or the block join actually actually you see? Um, so, as I mentioned, those documents are indexed into the index message. So, you have these inner objects that are next to each other, then you have the main document, and they sit next to each other in the Lucene index. Mm -hmm. The Lucene index is segmented. So, you have several segments, and they stay in the same segment, and they guarantee to always remain there, even though segments get merged and the, those documents are put into new segments, they remain there. So, what effectively Lucene does on top of it is it keeps a bit set on top of it where it maintains the relation between those inner uh, inner documents and the main document. So in this case, the main documents are marked is in, in a bit set. So when there are matches on a child document, it can really easily translate that to the, to the document it belongs to. So effectively, who owns the smaller documents that belong to this main document? And it will aggregate the score, and, will, and, and it won't push those documents as a hit, it will, it will use this document as a hit, and it will use a score aggregated from the child documents. And that's, that's it. Um, um, so in a nutshell, I try, try to tell you as much as possible. Uh, maybe it's, uh, uh, it's overwhelming. You can go for our stand, and I'm happy to a answer any question. I have extra slides, but I'm running out of time. So if you have you know, questions that can be answered in, in a minute or two, then I think. Um, Questions? Questions? One back there. Is there a limit to the number of parent documents or, or number of children documents? Uh, no, it, it, it scales nicely. So, um, obviously, if you have, if you have the, 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 the hardware to maintain a large cluster with parent child, you can grow, uh, you can grow to the, uh, you know, as, as much as you need to. If you have one machine and, uh, and only a few shards, it will be definitely limitation. But if you have an, an index with a lot of shards and a lot of nodes, you can you, you can scale as much as you want to it. And there's no limitation. Other questions? All right, thank you very much.